We have a car problem here in the U.S. Spend time in any one of our largest cities and you feel the pain. Transportation in America is just totally broken. Our cities are congested. It's too expensive to move people and goods around. Uh, and our vehicles on the roads contribute in a huge way to our sustainability crisis. We started 50 years, six years ago, to support entrepreneurs that are using technology entrepreneurship to solve the world's biggest problems. What's incredible is that you take pretty much any one of those issues and there's a company uh, and a team that we have backed is addressing one of them. One such company is Faction, a startup aiming to deliver on the promise of driverless technology. In an era of intense competition, Faction is building something fundamentally different and reimagining what it means to move around our cities. All right, you ready to go? Let's go. All right, let's do it. My name is Ayn McKendrick. I'm the CEO and founder of Faction. At Faction, we combine autonomy with teleoperation. So we're not constrained by waiting for 100% autonomous technologies. And the fact that we're doing electric vehicles, we're doing right-sized vehicles, we're trying to give people time back by not having them sit in traffic all day long, this is actually one of those categories that if you can solve some of our transportation problems, it's having a positive impact on everybody's life. For years, we've been promised a future where driverless vehicles enable us to move safely and efficiently through unclogged roads. It's not an entirely new idea, and every few decades excitement around emerging technologies seems to fuel outsized expectations. Today, despite popular enthusiasm, it's likely we're still years, if not decades, away from this envisioned future. Notable companies, having spent billions on R&D over the past decade, have come to realize one rather simple fact. There are always edge cases that elude even the most advanced AI systems. At least right now, human intuition is the best tool we have. And while some in the industry see this as a sobering reality, others see a big opportunity. The idea really sparked when I was you know, commuting to San Francisco while working on driverless semi-trucks. And these were completely driverless, so there's nobody on board those vehicles. And the way we did it, was with a combination of autonomous technology combined with teleoperation. We found that in a highway scenario, the vehicles could operate autonomously 99% of the time. And we really only needed the remote operators to be able to assist the vehicle during freeway on-off ramps, maybe while going through a toll booth, but they really only had to help the vehicle about 1% of its driving. It's the human and the computer working together, and that's how we do this at Faction. We never really turn off the autonomous system, but the humans are able to influence it and actually control how much leeway it gets. The industry appears to be going through a bit of a reset, likely settling in for years of more work. But while notable incumbents hunker down, Faction is striding forward. Not having to wait for full autonomy means they can get to market quicker and at a far lower cost. This plays on another key advantage they believe they have in the field, vehicle size and form factor. You know, filling the cities with more four-seat sedans to move just you or I around doesn't make a lot of sense. It's a wasted resource. And so it was about not only right-sizing the vehicles to be efficient as a startup, building chassis up, but it also fed into our you know, desire to right-size transportation and fit the vehicle to the mission, whether that's a micro-logistics delivery in 30 minutes or less, or bringing you a vehicle so that you can drive it yourself and the vehicle returns driverlessly to charging and parking, smaller just made a lot more sense. Over the decades, as almost every other technology has gotten smaller, cars keep getting bigger and more dangerous. Take for example, the new all-electric Ford F-150. It weighs a whopping 6,500 pounds. So even as car companies scale their EV production, much of the energy is being used to transport the vehicle itself rather than what's being transported. As we look towards the future of electric and autonomous vehicles, it begs the question, are we building our future in a sensible way or are we stuck in an auto-centric model of the past? The best way to predict the future is to build it. We're building the future. My name is Andrea Mariotti. I'm the Vice President of Vehicle Engineering. It makes no sense to have 4,000 pounds vehicle moving around one to one and a half persons. A vehicle like the one behind me uh, uses a lot less electricity than a full-size electric vehicle. What we like about uh, this configuration is that uh, the development cost is considerably lower than developing, for example, a passenger vehicle. It's also a lot faster. A decade or so ago, it would have been a much crazier idea for a small upstart to launch a driverless vehicle program. 
At that time, much of the self-driving infrastructure had yet to be built, leaving it the domain of those with deep pockets and a lot of time for experimentation. But over the past five years, we've seen a maturing of the market, leading to more affordable, cutting-edge, off-the-shelf hardware components and full-stack self-driving software solutions enabling key functions like perception and sensor fusion. What this means is that as we rethink our relationship with the traditional automobile, recent advances are making it possible to engineer solutions that are fundamentally different. The hardest problem, which is also the, the core value of what Faction is working on, is to make sure that we build a digital vehicle. In other words, we're not taking a vehicle with an internal combustion engine, swapping it with, an, with a motor, with an electric motor, and call it done. We're really building a digital vehicle from the ground up, where all components are interconnected. When we started Faction, we paused for a second. We said, okay, rather than make this yet another autonomy research project, if you had to build a vehicle system all in for around $30,000, um, what would you do? Using our lighter weight vehicles and this class of vehicle allows us to actually do that and show the industry how it's done properly. And then you can take that technology and scale it across multiple vehicle types. Yeah, when we started, you know, the goal was to prove our assumptions that we could build a three-wheel electric vehicle that we could make driverless and do it within a price point that would allow you to build a real product. And so that's what led to this vehicle. And so this was our first prototype that was built uh, about a year ago. Um, we use this for a lot of our early development. And this led to eventually doing demonstrations. You know, we're startup companies, so they have to do some fundraising. But as the companies evolved, we started partnering with companies like Arcimoto that makes this vehicle. This happens to be one of the delivery configurations where it has cargo box on the back. But a lot of the technology developed on our original prototypes uh, ported really well over to this vehicle system. And so we're working on these now. Uh, we've already demonstrated them operating driverlessly. And uh, soon you'll see these uh, entering on-road testing uh, with Faction's you know, uh, technology suite on them. What we love about the Faction business model is that it has the perfect like phase, you know, three-phase master plan, right? So phase one for Faction is micro logistics, moving packages and really small things around. Phase two is moving people around, which is exciting for obvious reasons. And then phase three is actually making available Faction's core technology to OEMs, to vehicle manufacturers, so that they can make their own vehicle fleets self-driving. Faction's technology is coming at the right time. From a size and efficiency perspective, they represent a model of the future that makes a lot of sense. At the same time, its driverless capabilities could provide an interesting solution for the labor challenges and other complexities brought about by the increase in micro-logistics. On a human level, the fun and flexibility of having access to these vehicles is equally exciting. But the best part of the story is yet to come. It's the future this technology might enable. Cities and streets that are cleaner and less car dependent. And given their approach, this future might come sooner than we think. Okay.